Here's a closer look at diagnostic testing. First up, CVS. CVS, or chorionic villus sampling, is a diagnostic test used to detect chromosome abnormalities or single gene disorders. The procedure, which is done from the beginning of the 10th week to the end of the 13th week of pregnancy, involves obtaining cells or chorionic villi from the placenta. Since the baby and the placenta originate from the same conception, looking at the chromosomes in the placenta should represent the baby's chromosomes. There are two ways to perform a CVS, both of which are ultrasound guided. The approach, however, will depend on the location of the placenta. Transabdominal approach involves a thin needle going through the abdomen. And transcervical approach involves inserting a slender plastic catheter through the cervix, similar to having a pap smear, to get to the placenta. When a sample is obtained, the laboratory generates a picture of the chromosomes. The risk of miscarriage in CVS is approximately 1 in 500. In 1 to 2% of procedures, both normal and abnormal cells are detected. This is referred to as a mosaic result. In the case of a mosaic result, amniocentesis is recommended to determine which of the cells are representative of the baby. Now let's take a closer look at amniocentesis. An amniocentesis is a procedure done from 15 weeks to the end of the 23rd week of pregnancy for genetic indications that involves obtaining a small amount of amniotic fluid surrounding the baby. This test involves inserting a thin needle through the abdomen and removing two to three tablespoons of amniotic fluid, which contains some of the baby's skin cells that have been shed. When a sample is obtained, the laboratory generates a picture of the baby's chromosomes. In addition to the chromosome studies, the amniocentesis can measure the levels of alpha fetoprotein, or AFP. Measurement of AFP in combination with ultrasound detects approximately 98% of pregnancies affected with open neural tube defects, like spina bifida. The risk of miscarriage after amniocentesis is approximately 1 in 500, with some of the more recent studies suggesting it could be as low as 1 in 900. And now, the chromosome testing options. Once a sample is obtained, either from CVS or an amniocentesis procedure, there are various tests that can be ordered. A routine chromosome analysis, called a karyotype, is considered the standard of care and performed on all samples. This test requires growing cells, which is often referred to as culturing, and then analyzing the chromosomes under a microscope. Multiple cells are analyzed to maximize test accuracy. First, the lab determines if the cell has the correct number of chromosomes. Then, the laboratory looks further at the banding pattern to see if there are any large or extra missing pieces of the chromosome material. Extra material is called a duplication, and missing material is called a deletion. Results are typically available in 10 days. The karyotype can detect the vast majority of chromosome abnormalities. FISH is a technology that rapidly assesses a few common chromosome abnormalities, providing a patient with preliminary results. When mixed with the cell, Specially designed colored probes act like a magnet, attaching to a chromosome of interest. When two attach, that signifies the normal two copies of a particular chromosome. In the case of a trisomy, three would attach and signify an extra copy of a particular chromosome. The most common FISH test offered is for chromosomes 13, 18, 21, X, and Y. FISH provides information within 24 to 48 hours of a procedure, and although highly accurate, is considered preliminary. FISH is only ordered on select samples when indicated and a rapid result is needed. What cannot be detected on a karyotype are very small chromosome imbalances called microdeletions and microduplications. Although a microdeletion or a microduplication is very small, if it involves important genes, the, the imbalance can still have a significant impact on the individual's physical or intellectual development. These imbalances are considered structural chromosome abnormalities. Therefore, they are not related to maternal age. There are two tests that may be offered to test for microdeletions or microduplications. It's important to note that these tests are not standard of care and are optional. The first test is called a microdeletion FISH panel. Utilizing FISH technology, a panel of 13 microdeletions is tested for normal or abnormal result. The chance of pregnancy is affected with one of the deletions on the panel. It's approximately 1 in 1,000. Most insurance companies will cover the microdeletion FISH panel. The second is called a microarray. Microarray tests for all microdeletions and microduplications instead of targeting a select few. The microarray has the highest detection rate of all chromosome tests available. 
In a low-risk pregnancy, which includes normal blood work and a normal ultrasound, there's a 1.7% chance to detect an abnormality on a microarray. If the ultrasound reveals a birth defect, the chance to find an abnormality on the microarray goes up significantly and can be as high as 10 to 12% when more than one birth defect is present. Interpretations of microarray results are not always straightforward. Some abnormal results have decreased penetrance and variable expressivity. Decreased penetrance is when an individual is found to have a microdeletion or microduplication, but does not exhibit any symptoms. Variable expressivity refers to how the same microdeletion or microduplication can display different symptoms ranging from mild to severe in different individuals. In addition to normal and abnormal results, there's a small chance to obtain a variant of uncertain significance on a microarray. A variant of uncertain significance is when the lab identifies a microdeletion or microduplication they have not seen previously and cannot determine if it is disease-causing or not. Coverage for microarray varies. Some insurance will cover a microarray for all pregnancies, while other insurance companies will only cover a microarray when a baby has a birth defect on the ultrasound. And lastly, let's look at testing for single gene disorders. Testing for chromosome abnormalities does not require the laboratory to know where a problem is, as they can analyze all of the chromosome material easily. Testing for alterations within a gene, however, is not as easy. Genes are too tiny to be visualized under a microscope, so we are only able to test for the gene changes on a CVS or amniocentesis sample when the baby is known to be at risk. Currently, we are unable to analyze all genes simultaneously on a routine basis. Instead, we are able to analyze a few select chains when indicated. Indications may include a family history of single gene disorder, unique ultrasound findings, or when the baby is determined to be at risk after carrier screening of the parents. In most pregnancies, there is no need to analyze all of the baby's genes. The exception would be if a baby has multiple ultrasound abnormalities, a unique ultrasound abnormality for which there are numerous single gene disorders that are under consideration. Whole exome sequencing, also known as WES, is now recently being introduced within a pregnancy. In select cases, whole exome sequencing is a complex test that analyzes thousands of genes simultaneously. Your genetic counselor can discuss in more detail the risk, benefits, and limitations of whole exome sequencing if it is offered within your pregnancy. Whole exome sequencing may not be considered standard of care, and therefore, your insurance company may not cover testing. No two pregnancies are the same. That's why our team will be there to help you navigate which testing options are right for you. To learn more about diagnostic testing, consult your doctor or visit northwell.edu genetics.